What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Julia and welcome to the long awaited moving Q&A. So if you are not aware, last week I made the big move from Pittsburgh, PA to Delray Beach, Florida and I couldn't be happier. But you guys have so many questions about this move because it was very abrupt. I didn't really tell anyone about it and it was really a surprise move. So today I'm gonna to be answering all of those questions you sent in. I'm gonna to try to keep it brief. I'm gonna try not to chat on and on because we all know that I do that. So without further ado, let's get right into this Q and A. All right, question one says, was it a spontaneous move? And I know it probably seems and looked super spontaneous, but in all honesty, no, it was not a spontaneous move at all. I kind of made my mind up last October when I was down here visiting my grandparents. I love Florida so much. And I was like, you know what? Florida is gonna be the next place that I live. And Pittsburgh was always a super temporary thing. We were just there while Cameron was finishing up school at Pitt. We decided to renew our lease for another year because I loved my job, I loved all my clients. We really liked the city and we wanted to experience the city without COVID. Once everything opened up, it got super violent, not at all what we were expecting. We had shootings almost every single weekend, like on our street corner. I got used to waking up to gunshots and like turning on the police scanner. I wish I was exaggerating, but I'm not, unfortunately. Like it was terrifying. And that whole like safety, violence, crime, all of that, plus our slumlords of landlords, are pretty much the main reason why we really wanted to get out of Pittsburgh. And I'm just not cut out for city living, all of the traffic, driving around for an hour plus, just looking for a parking spot at my house. Like, it was not at all what I was expecting. I just was so ready to get out of there. So while it looked spontaneous, it was not a spontaneous move. However, it did happen a lot faster than we thought it would. We are unfortunately still paying rent at that house back in Pittsburgh through the end of June but I'll take it, like I'd rather do that than live in there for the next few months. So I am so freaking happy that we are now in Florida. All right, question number two says, why Florida? And long story short, because of the sunshine and because it makes me a lot closer to my grandparents, I'm about five miles from them and they are so happy I'm down here. I am so happy that I'm close to them. And the weather is incredible. You guys know I like getting outside every single day and I'm so happy that I'm in a place where I can comfortably be outside in the sunshine every single day and i'm really not one to like all four seasons like give me summer all year round and i am the happiest girl in the world so i thought florida would be the perfect place and i am loving it question three says are you in a house or apartment and are you renting or did you buy so we are actually in a house and we are renting at the moment all right question four says will you still wake up at 4 a.m every day what's the new morning routine i honestly haven't established my actual routine and it really depends on what my day looks like, what my client schedule looks like. So I feel like it's gonna change every single day. But lately, I've been waking up early around like 5, 5.30, 6, getting right to my workout, finishing up my workout, and then I start some of my client sessions, computer work, and stuff like that. I love waking up and getting right to my workout. That's why it was so important that I have my garage gym. And don't worry, there will be a full garage gym tour coming soon. I'm obsessed with it, but that's pretty much my morning routine, waking up, getting right to my workout, and then getting all of my day. I just feel so much more productive when I get that workout in first thing. So that's the biggest difference. But of course there are days where maybe I'll train a client on FaceTime first and then get into my workout. So it really just depends, but I'm not waking up at 4 a.m. every single day. Sure, some days, yes and I am still kind of in the habit of waking up super early, so if I hear like a sound or if my phone goes off, like I'm wide awake just because I'm such an early bird and I'm so used to waking up early. But when I can, I try to allow myself to sleep in until like 5, 5.30, 6 o'clock if I'm getting a little bit crazy, but ideally wake up, get right to that workout. All right, question five. I probably received this question more than any other question. And it says, are you working on a different F45 in Florida or did you give up that job? And no, I am not working on a different F45 down here in Florida. I am currently still working for F45 training in Pittsburgh Strip District, just on the back end. And I absolutely love it. Like I love still being connected to that team and that family because I love them so freaking much. That is the update on F45. 
45 because I know so many of you have been wondering about that. So many of you follow me because of F45. So I am still involved in F45. I still love F45, especially the F45 in Pittsburgh. So to sum up that answer, yes, I'm still working at F45 in Pittsburgh on the back end of things remotely and I absolutely love it. All right, question six kind of goes right off of number five, which is what is your job situation? PT, F45, a little bit of everything. And yes, a little bit of everything. I am still doing my personal training. I am still working at F45 remotely on the back end, like I just talked about. And of course I do YouTube. I do work with a few brands. So I do make small commissions off of those things, but primarily my own personal training business at 45. And then I guess you could just classify it as social media. All right, question is seven, kind of goes right off of six, and it says, is your personal training at a point where you're fully independent? And no, I don't think my income from my personal training business makes me fully independent. I don't even take a salary from it at all, but I wouldn't consider just my personal training business like my main source of income. Like I said, I have a 45, my personal training business, and then also commissions and brand deals and everything from social media and I personally love that little mix of the different income streams because I never have to have like a real job at least for now like it gets the job done and also very enjoyable like I never ever want a real person job as bad as that sounds like I hate sitting still like even sitting still for these videos it's like too much sitting for me I am someone who's like very go 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 needs to be doing something at all times and they always say like when you don't work a nine to five, you end up working 24 seven for yourself. And it is so true. I feel like I'm working constantly, but at the same time, I love what I do so much that it doesn't even feel like work. I'm just like living my life. And I love that. Like I seriously love it so much. I talk about this all the time and I'm sure you guys are all tired of hearing me say it, but I love YouTube. I love Instagram. I love making content and working with these brands that I adore so much. I love my personal training business and connecting with my clients and helping them reach their goals. And I love working for F45 too. Like it's just the perfect little combination of work that doesn't even feel like work. So hopefully that answered the question, but no, I would say I'm not fully independent off of just my income from personal training yet. We'll see, maybe one day. Next question I've kind of hinted at the answer to throughout these other ones, but number eight says, what are you doing about your Pennsylvania clients? So if you're unfamiliar, I do in-person personal training, online like FaceTime or Zoom personal training, and then I also offer personalized training programs where I create the entire program and send it out to the client and I check in with them week after week. So two of my in-person clients from Pennsylvania actually switched to personalized programs. They're very self-sufficient, like they're both super fit individuals they know how to exercise they mainly just needed me for that accountability and programming of the workouts so I created personalized programs for them they're kind of off on their own but I do check in with them and keep in touch we do check-ins every single week to make sure they're on track make sure they're still making progress and make sure they know exactly what they are doing two of my other clients from Pittsburgh switched to FaceTime client sessions and then one of my other clients had already switched to personalized programs because he was so self-sufficient and did not need me there at all. So out of my five Pittsburgh clients, three of them are on personalized training programs and then two of them have just switched to FaceTime training sessions. All right, question number nine says, do you miss your friends? And yes, I miss my friends like crazy. If you know me, you know that my friends are pretty much all the F45 members and coaches, the most amazing people in the world. I spent pretty much every single day with them in Pittsburgh and I wouldn't want it any other way. Like I wish I could bring them all down to Florida with me. I still talk to them every day. That's why I love that I'm still involved with F45. I still keep in touch with them. I FaceTime with them. My work really got me all of my friends and I wouldn't want it any other way. Like I love having that connection with the people that I'm trying to help better their lives because I think it makes it just so much more special and so much more genuine and meaningful and impactful on their lives. 
and I love that they all became my friends and even though they were all very sad that I was leaving they were all so supportive and like understanding and I just love them so freaking much kind of off topic but also related to the last question if you go back and watch my vlog that has a thumbnail that says who am I and I think the title is like girls weekend in Pittsburgh that was my very last weekend in Pittsburgh so of course I spent it with my best friends it was such a fun time and I love those girls like more than anything I miss them so much and they truly made all my time in Pittsburgh so worthwhile like literally the most incredible like life-changing group of girls ever and i am so appreciative of them so kat Alyssa, ec courtney bella if you guys are watching this and i think you all watch my videos then just know that i love and miss you all so much and i can't wait for you guys to visit all right question 10 says what was the hardest part about deciding to make the move and honestly deciding to move was the easiest part like i said pittsburgh was always very temporary we knew we wanted to go somewhere else afterwards and ever since last october i was very set on florida i love the weather here i love being close to my grandparents delray beach is such like a young professional crowd there's a lot of stuff to do it's just a fun area and I just knew that this is where I wanted to be next in life. So that whole part was very easy. In terms of the hard parts, finding a place was super hard. I know we did it pretty quickly, but I was constantly looking at places. My mom was constantly looking at places. Cameron was constantly looking at places. Like it kind of took over my life. I know you all didn't see that, but pretty much 24 seven, I was looking for a place to live. If you know anything about Florida real estate right now, it is absolutely insane. Whether you are buying or renting, it is crazy. So that was very hard. But the hardest part was probably telling my boss, all my coworkers and all my friends that I was leaving because I knew it was going to shock them. And I knew how upset they were going to be. Like I said, they are the absolute best group of people, best community in the entire world. Like I did not want to leave them by any means but I just had to get out of Pittsburgh and I knew I wasn't gonna be there forever. So breaking the news to them was definitely the hardest and like saddest part. But I love that we're all still in contact and I talk to them all the time and I think they're just all like forever friends and they'll always hold a special place in my heart. But definitely the hardest part was breaking the news to them and actually finding a place. All right, question 11 says, I've heard of traffic slash crowdedness is super bad in Florida. Have you noticed a real difference? And honestly, no, I haven't really noticed anything too crazy in terms of traffic or crowdedness, but I feel like those two things are just kind of a new reality with living somewhere that's like cool, desirable, a place that people wanna go or vacation to. Like for example, my brother moved to Denver a few months ago and when I was out there visiting him, I couldn't believe the traffic. Like never in a million years did I think such like an outdoorsy place would have traffic like that, but it's because it's such a cool place that people want to go to. And I feel like Florida's kind of becoming that same thing. The good thing is our highways are like five to six lanes wide and our main roads are like three to four to maybe even five lanes wide. So. Florida does a really good job like accommodating their roads to the amount of people in the state. So I really haven't noticed anything too crazy. When we got in last Tuesday night, it was around rush hour, like 5.30, 6 p.m. And there was a little bit of a slowdown on 95, like our last five miles. We never stopped or anything, just going a little bit slower. But like I said, the highways are a lot wider, so a lot more cars can move through. Whereas in Pittsburgh, there was like one way in and one way out of the city, and the highways were all like two lanes max. And they were typically doing construction on one of those lanes. So, so far I take this traffic any day over Pittsburgh and honestly weekends here, there are no cars on the roads at all. We drove down to the beach on Saturday to watch the sunrise and we were the only car on the road. The weekdays are a little bit busier on like the main roads just because people are commuting to and from work, but it's like totally normal traffic. And I feel like there's also a lot more like routes to get places here in Florida. Like my grandparents live five miles away. Like I said, I can take the highway if I want. I can take A1A right along the beach if I want. I can take back roads. I can go through neighborhoods. Like the possibilities are just endless. And I feel like there are ways around any traffic if there is traffic. So hopefully that answered the question. I haven't noticed anything crazy. I personally love it here. 
All right, question 12 says, how'd you move the home gym? So if you watched my surprise, I moved to Florida video, then you know that I rented a U-Haul U-Box. It's basically like a shipping container, but a little bit smaller that they drop off at your house, you pack it with stuff, they ship it down to wherever you need it, they drop it off at that house, you unpack it, and then they pick it up the next day. Super convenient, very affordable, made the entire process like so easy. Very glad that I chose to go with the U-Haul U-Box. It was way cheaper than doing like the pod route or renting a truck, having someone drive down. It was just the best option and I'm very glad that I did it. So I highly recommend, but that's how we moved all of our home gym stuff from Pittsburgh, all of our bigger furniture, our mattress, everything that we knew we wanted to bring but we couldn't fit in our cars, we put into the U-Haul U-Box. And then in terms of our new gym equipment, which you will see very soon, I purchased all of that from Rep Fitness. I do have a link to Rep Fitness down below if you guys wanna shop through that. It does support me, so thank you very much. But I highly recommend their equipment and everything ships for free, which is absolutely incredible and also unheard of for fitness equipment because of how heavy it is. So I just highly recommend Rep. I ordered it all like a week before we got here and it actually arrived the day we got here. So it was absolutely perfect. And like I said, you guys will be seeing that soon. But that's how we got all of our home gym set up down here. I did sell the bike back in Pittsburgh and I gave my bench from Pittsburgh to my friend Alyssa. All right, second to last question. I promise we are almost done. But number 13 says, other than weather, what are you most excited about for living in Florida? Obviously being so close to my grandparents, like it makes them so happy and that makes me so happy. We were just there for my birthday dinner last night and they are just like on cloud nine. So that obviously brings me so much joy. I love being so close to the beach. I feel so inspired to make new, like fun, fresh content for Instagram and YouTube and for the different brands I'm working with. I don't know, just this new space, new environment, new weather, the sunshine. I just feel so inspired and I am so excited for all of the content to come. Like I have so many great ideas and I can't wait to kind of like get settled, get into my routine and start working on all of them. So look forward to that. And also just like living with Cameron, we always had roommates in Pittsburgh. So just being the two of us, obviously very excited for that. Being in this beautiful house, especially compared to what we were living in in Pittsburgh. And I don't know, just making this space our own, our garage gym, and then the little things like having a driveway, having a dishwasher, having ceiling fans, like such little things, but so life-changing. And it's, it's really just everything about living here that I am so excited for and I really couldn't be happier. I can't wait for my parents to come visit in May. I can't wait for Cameron's family to visit, my friends to visit. Like, I'm just so excited and so happy here. All right, last question, number 14. It says, how scary was it to change your whole world and make the move? I personally didn't think it was scary at all, like not even in the slightest, and it really wasn't that big of a change. Clearly the biggest difference is my location, but I definitely prefer this location. And I know a lot of people hate change, they're very resistant to it, they don't want anything to do with it, but I personally love change. I've never been one to like run from change. I kind of embrace it. I think change brings about a ton of growth. So I think a lot of people would have viewed my move from Pittsburgh to Florida as a very like stressful and scary situation, but I didn't see it as that at all. I thought it was a very fun, exciting, and like new opportunity that I had to jump on and take advantage of. So I think having that like mindset and outlook on the move helped the move be more fun, exciting, and a lot smoother transition. And yes, while I am farther from my parents and farther from back home, the plane ride from Florida to home is actually a shorter trip than if I were to drive from Pittsburgh to home. And I know my parents are gonna come visit me here. They like Florida way more than they like Pittsburgh. They like that I am in a much safer and quieter neighborhood and that I am just so much happier here and I'm back to like my normal, happy, positive, optimistic self. The longer I was staying in Pittsburgh, I felt like I was getting more like negative and pessimistic and I don't know if it was just like all the violence and crime and terrible weather like all draining on me but I don't know I felt like I was just not myself in Pittsburgh and now I am myself I am happy and I just feel so grateful to be here I am so inspired and I don't know I just couldn't be happier it was not scary at all and it was not stressful and if you are someone who is contemplating making a big move because you think it'll make you happier, then I highly, highly recommend.
I have been talking so much, my throat hurts so freaking bad. You guys have no idea how long these Q and A's take because I mess up my words way too much. Like it's honestly embarrassing. I think I started this video almost three hours ago and it was only 14 questions, but Big thank you to everyone who sent in questions because you guys made this way more fun and enjoyable. I had way more questions than these 14, but I felt like I answered the most important ones. But with that being said, if you have any other questions, feel free to comment those down below because I would love to get back to you. I would love to answer anything you want to know. But for now, I feel like I have blabbed on and on for long enough. I'm sure you all are tired of hearing my voice. But that is gonna wrap up this moving q and A. I I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you to everyone who has been so incredibly supportive of my move. I am truly so happy here and I am so appreciative of you all. But if you guys did like this video, make sure you give it a like, make sure you're subscribed, and I will see you all next time.